Assalamu warahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear audience, to Monday Musings. And subhanAllah, we are already halfway through this season, episode two. And as promised, we have a special guest with us today. Most of you are familiar with Asba and her work, mashallah. She was also one of the speakers at the parenting conference, mashallah. Asba Alayna, she's a mother of six from Pakistan but currently residing in the Caribbean, mashallah. And she's the key master between, uh, behind Muslim Mama Comics. For those of you who are active on Instagram, I am sure you must have come across her work, yeah? She is like a queen of Instagram. And she What's has launched, head, yeah, mashallah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she has launched her course Recently, mm -hmm. Reclaim Yourself After Motherhood. She is also a mom's self-worth coach, active on Facebook, Instagram. She's also got her own website at a muslimmama.com. Asba, a few words from you. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you so much, Intazakla Khair, Sister Rota. That was a very elaborated um, introduction. So as you said, um, I'm basically a Muslim and, I'm, uh, and a mother. And um, I started, you know, being, um, I have always been a writer and I had always written as far as I remember. But then when I moved abroad and I was expecting my first baby and I didn't have any family and friends, so I resort to internet. I would Google around just to see what happens, what pregnancy is. And um, I would come across a lot of Christian blogs and they were amazing. And the best part about this is that whatever they were sharing, they would, you know, connect it back to their Bible or their religion. And I loved it. And I was actively looking for something that a Muslim mother is doing because I knew there was so much gems and benefits and amazing stuff in Quran and Sunnah. And I was looking around trying to find somebody who is doing the same thing with, you know, our, our uh, religion and our traditions. But unfortunately, there was none. And two, three years later, I realized if I can write and if I am into religion, maybe I should be doing the same thing. And if there's nobody else who's doing that, maybe I should do that too. Mm -hmm. So this is how a muslimmama.com was born. Um, I started writing, connecting whatever I was, you know, going through with what my religion tells me, what the comfort I got in my religion, in Quran and Sunnah. And then later on, I realized there's, mashallah, we, we have a lot of writers, but in the world of Instagram, where we see pictures, I needed something, you know, something pictorial, something that is, you know, summed up in one picture, because most of the time, we people find it difficult to go through a long article, but it's easy to remember and to even um, read a small illustration. And this is how a Muslim Mama comics was born three, two and a half, three years later, roughly three years late, uh, ago. And I didn't, I had no idea I would draw. I, I didn't draw, you know, I technically wasn't an illustrator per se, but then um, I, I just started off hoping and believing this will, you know, bring benefit and good to people. Alhamdulillah, three years down the line, I can say I finally learned drawing. <laughs> and Alhamdulillah, I've reached so many of uh, the people. And the int intention stays the same, to be able to normalize human Muslim moms and specifically mus visibly Muslim mothers and mus visibly Muslim women. And to be able to uplift Muslim mothers because we are in an emotional crisis. You know, I believe you, Sister Iroda, you and Iram will agree to that. So this is um, what I do, and this is who I am, and this is what it, my work is all about. Mashallah, I, I love your that, uh, comics, right? Subhanallah, do you love them, Iram? They like, I love yeah. your imagination. Ah. Like you said, you know, you, you sum up the most complex concepts in just like one picture, subhanAllah, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love them so much, which is why you are, uh, mashallah, in my opinion, the most qualified uh, person to have a discussion on today's topic. So this uh, question we received from a young mom, right, subhanAllah, she's asking, and it's, I read it in her words, I feel all alone raising kids as my husband is never around due to full-time work, right? working into the late hours of the night and when he is at home he's too busy on a laptop or on his mobile with more work at home so yeah. how to deal yeah. with loneliness and 
as it uh, affects me badly, subhanAllah. And I think yeah. you have worked through your course with, um, you know, a, a lot of women dealing with loneliness and um, dealing with similar issues. And um, yeah, and I, I think me and Iram, I think you are also, you know, you have young kids, probably me and Iram have been through that stage. What do you say, Iram? Have you like, if you kind of passed through that stage, like, because yeah. in my younger days, you know, I also used to get really annoyed, like, oh, you know, I wish my husband was more hands on. I wish he was more involved. I wish he did this, he did that. But you kind of learn throughout the years, like, you know, how to just accept whatever is there, you know, accept the reality, yes. right? You just stop exactly. for wishing things, right? SubhanAllah. And um, yeah, what what are your, your, um, thoughts on this issue, Asper? Totally. sister Roda. So uh, before I go on with that, one of the other reasons I started a Muslim Mama Comics was because where I live, there is practically no Muslim community. There's literally like a handful of Muslim people on this island, technically the whole country. And since we are, um, we are an island, so we don't have borders attached with other countries so they mean this means you know there's although it's a we it's a tu tourist resort but we never had a fulfilling huge muslim community and i am an extrovert i am a people's person and i find and draw my energy from the people around me so i'm one of the reasons that i started a muslim mama comics was because i was not able to find that community here. So I was very lonely in the first three, four years of the marriage and moving here. I was very, very lonely. And I think that is the problem, the root, one of the root causes of the frustration and anger is the loneliness. And we all need tribe, especially mother, mothers. We are hardwired to be with other Muslim women. We are hardwired. We are made this way. And when, especially in today's world, when we are being isolated from our tribe, this is one of the things that really, how do I put it, affects us the most. And this is also one of the things that can console us. So you need, if wherever you are in whatever circumstances you are, you need to find a tribe of women, especially Muslim women and especially mothers in the time you are. For example, if your kids are younger, you need to be in contact and touch in touch with women, Muslim women who are who are exactly in this phase of life that you are in. And that is the answer of how to end up loneliness. If you'll keep looking at your husband, what happens is like we have this deep desire to connect with other women and to, to feel this, you know, me too thing. So we go through motherhood and pregnancies and deliveries, something that our, our spouses are unable to understand. They're like, why is it that you need to talk about your pregnancy? Why is it that you feel the need to share your birth story over and over again? But for us, it is like matter of honors. We want to show it. We want to just display it around to the, to the world to see, look, I created this baby. Allah created it. But like, you know, for us, it's like that. This is my medal of honor. Good, or, good thing or a bad thing, that's a separate debate whether it's something healthy or not. But this is how we are, right? This is our biggest achievement. We At least we think it like this. So we need to bond over women on this, like, you know, on motherhood. And this is also because motherhood is a very transitionary thing. It keeps changing. When your children are young, the challenges are different. When your children grow older, if you will agree, the challenges will become different. So you need to have a group of women who, you know, you can relate to, you can share your problems and struggles with. And unfortunately, most of the time, the spouses won't be there to help you through. If you are lucky enough, alhamdulillah, so alhamdulillah, there are spouses who really understand your struggle and, you know, make you through. But again, you have you cannot, as you said, wish around and doing things. You need to look around and say, okay, this is what my spouse is doing. At least he's paying the bills, right? This is a big thing. A lot of the people are having difficulty with paying the bills. So at least he's paying the bills. So I'm getting one support from this side. Where else can I get the other support? Where else can I be supported by? Like, you know, it could be my parents, could be my friends, could be somebody else. And then people say like, you know, but... I don't have friends. I don't have people I can bond over. There are nobody, you know, who's who has a similar mindset as I do. And I had been struggling with for a long time too, till my brother said that when you have internet, you have the access to the world. You can go and find your community there. So that is that will be my answer to this, that, you know, 
in order to solve a lot of emotional issues that mothers are facing, the best idea is to connect with a tribe of women that are supportive and that are exactly in the phase they are in, we are in. To you know, so that you know, can you you get that kind of motivation? You can that kind of support that you're craving from your husband, and which is which he's clearly unable to give you. So you know, instead of constantly looking at your husband that he's not you know giving me support, um, and you know that again just causes more frustration in that relationship as well. If you turn your focus to someplace else where you can actually get support, to you know, you will your relationship will will your with your husband will also improve. and inshallah your relationship with yourself and with other women will also and your children will also improve as well what do you say sister roda would you agree with that i'm i'm going to put you on the spot here right <laughs> okay so um, i remember years ago i think around 15 years ago i attended a uh, you know parenting workshop in london and um, we didn't have uh, smartphones were not that uh, popular at the time right it was not uh, common and at the end of this talk uh, 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 one of the sisters young sisters you know raised raised her hand and asked this question and i remember this very very clearly because when we had the question the whole you know the room was laughing so she asked you know i i it's very difficult for me because i am the second wife my husband married his laptop before me i find things very very difficult you know what what do you suggest and i just remember you know like laughing so hard because at the time you know like i said you know smartphones were not popular right so um and this the when i uh, read this email from the sister it reminded me of that incident that took place you know 15 years ago so when you enter marriage you obviously every woman comes with certain expectations right they want that connection that you are you talked about and they they want that companionship and um they want to like fulfillment basically right yes, and totally. when they are when their needs are not fulfilled obviously they can't have women friends right but nobody can replace the the place of a husband right like when when it's not there what is she supposed to do you know like she wants to get her husband on board obviously right and then like Ideally, maybe yeah. like meet the needs at least halfway right rather than like completely yeah. giving up okay like you know what ah oh, he's just useless i'm just going to go and find my own you know group of sisters and i'm just going to hang on to them and i will discuss every other problem with them and i will seek their counseling and advice what not but your husband is your husband right and every woman deserves that companionship that connection you know you know like that fulfillment so how do you how do you deal with this what do you advise to the sisters you know what what um yeah that's my that's that's what i want to put you on on the spot here subhanallah right uh, like i said i have been through this stage right i have i have come across through the other end of this um of this phase of life but yeah i'd like to hear your thoughts on this okay um how do you get that message across to husband that i need that connection i need that companionship sometimes like in uh, it depends on what where you are in your relationship with your husband so if there is an open communication technically most of the problems are solved but what happens is that you know as as, as she saying that he's too busy on his laptop and mobile and that's that's very problematic because they're addictive right so i think it is difficult to make other people understand that this is prob- like you know this is causing difficulty in our relationship so op- open communication is probably the answer i think a very assertive communication something that we are not taught something that we are not taught as women to put our need across in a gentle way you know in a gentle and but assertive way that i really need your attention and um i remember taking one of the um lectures and uh, she said that the she she actually shared shared the example of young young um, daughters basically so she said have you noticed that daughters are always the closest to their fathers and she said do you know why it is like that it is because when they need something they don't 
um, they just go demand and they just if they want to be cuddled they would just you know come and they sit in you know their daddy's lap and they're like okay then he's like he's uh, he just give them attention so, and that is very difficult for us women because our egos are like oh being women being in that position how do i take the first step how do i do that you know so and that's i think this is also one of this is the biggest problem that we face that we are we, we are unable to express the need of that companionship so the, the lecturer said if you really want to feel that love be that young girl be that you know in in the in demanding that love and attention but um i agree this is also the very difficult step but again if you really want to take that step <laughs> yeah iram i'd like to hear your thoughts on this I mean, alhamdulillah, I'm on board with the both of you. So I was thinking like, yeah, when uh, uh, in our parenting journey, like mashallah, now he'll be 15. So mm, I was in the US, I was cut off from the family and everything. And I was, I used to, I used to joke, I say, I'm not living in US, I'm living in a matchbox, because my mom was working at that time. So I was not constantly in touch with her. She was busy with her work, right? I was not constantly in touch with my in-laws. It's not very pleasurable to keep talking to somebody that you're not already very, um, gel then with right and so the but majority of the time six months at least my in-laws were with me but the six months that they weren't and my husband was doing his master's right after our so for the four years of our marriage as soon as we got married um and as soon as i got pregnant with the first one uh for the both kids he started his master's when the first one was born and he ended his master's when the second one was born right so and i was i did not know how to drive i could not go to any wow. i just could not go anywhere i was just literally living in that matchbox astaghfirullah what that did to me that the break that happened at that time may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i can totally that. understand i <laughs> so, mean but um yes I was very resentful towards my husband. I understood that what he was doing was for for the family's sake, but I was very resentful and I um it is true. And the parent and at that time we did not have those iPhones came in way later, right? So I had that um parent magazines. I signed up for free subscriptions. So every time I would open um internet, I would see wherever there are parent free subscriptions. So it was basically the parenting magazines that helped me through all throughout my pregnancy. and through the first at least 4 years of uh, motherhood uh, i used to get those mail uh, subscriptions and i used to read them and then i used to say okay this is happening to me okay then this is happening i did not know i did not have anybody to talk to even i because i did not have Love any it. right subhanallah so true and, yeah and um my husband he was like what's wrong with you why are you always upset with me what is it? i'm like ah! <laughs> How am I, I can get to tell it. you that I am so lonely and so overwhelmed. Yes, lonely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So subhanallah. But he realized. He did realize. And um, yes, the communication was not at all good. And um, sister Rada and I, we've spoken about this, like how to build a communication. And in my later on years, after the first decade, I think my communication became much better because I learned. Again, I had to learn to. let go of the ego and let go of the preconceived notions that and especially all the garbage that we take in with with the media like um you know if you're married then your husband has to be ignorant then your husband is supposed to be i mean like there's so many messages like i feel that the world does not even teach how to respect your spouse like we're talking so much about like the husbands don't respect the wives but literally i now i feel that do the wives also respect the husbands like are they taught to respect the husbands like yes, yes. The, the the patriarchy thing is different it's a totally different issue what i'm saying is like we've heard women say oh my husband is dumb or my husband does not know or i'm taking care of another baby really is he a baby <laughs> so there are yeah. things that there are things that yes we are not gelling and meshing with and not having that communication but it's 50% like you said like sister rosa said halfway i needed to come through and i was not even making that halfway effort i realized that that i was not making that effort and i was expecting him to some way he would come to him and then he would know that what's happening with me subhanallah so i i can relate with what both of you are saying now mashallah yeah. now i am more busy than him so alhamdulillah he is like eram just keep your phone don't give me some time 
Times have changed, mashallah. The more I think, I think, I, I think I'm in the middle of uh, being there <laughs> myself, still figuring out how to communicate, and uh, you know, learning as well how to communicate. But alhamdulillah, yes, we, we're gonna go there. Yeah, we, age we... helped me a lot. I mean, like uh, I, my my thirties, I can I can give like alhamdulillah. As soon as I stepped into my thirties, I became braver, stronger, mature, much more confident. I don't know where that came from, but like thirties are beautiful. <laughs> I'm like now I'm going to go on my forties, and I'm like yeah, it's getting better. It's getting better. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Yes. Wow. Going to yeah, yeah. yes, it will get better. The thing is, it will get better because I remember in my 20s, right? I remember, like you said, the frustration and the resentment and like just turning so bitter, right? SubhanAllah. And I, I, I know because we bottle up so much and then whenever something happens you feel like talking is like oh forget about it you know there's so many things that I, I i haven't spoken like you feel stuck like oh i don't even know where to start but like mm-hmm. like you said you know we we leave them like okay figure out what's happening to me right rather than telling you know what i'm really struggling right it's seeking out help basically we don't communicate our needs and then we just leave them guessing and when it comes to frustration especially what i realized is frustration is when the reality does not match your preconceived expectations right Mm -hmm. that's when you get frustrated because you have preconceived expectations in your mind that your husband is supposed to be this way and that way you know abc you have the list already right and you look at the reality and okay like he's not ticking my box one three four five right and then you get frustrated you get you get really frustrated but the thing is you you never telling him what's the the first is definitely lack of communication but the second is also my from my experience is just kill the expectation you know (laughs) just kill the expectation you know expect nothing Right, SubhanAllah. I know it may sound to some like it may cause some controversy to some women, you know, especially. No, but that's actually that's the easiest way to keep you are self content. I mean, easiest in a way like the results are the results become much better. But um, on, on on doing on our part, it is tough. Not everybody has that nerves, like you know, to to kill expectations because like no, why 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 am I married? But the first question will be okay. So why am I married? What is the purpose of my marriage? What is the point? Yeah, to that. <laughs> especially yeah, if here. you are, especially if you are a working woman. Like I've always worked, right? Mm-hmm. I've always had mm-hmm. my own money, and I've always been independent. I never asked my husband, like, "Oh, can I have X amount? Because I want to buy, you know, ABC, or can I go out uh, this place?" And you know, uh, there was never the question of money because I always had my money right in fact sometimes it's probably more than his money so like especially for most working women independent women who earn Mm -hmm. their own money they Mm -hmm. they you know if the husband is not contributing um in in other ways like more than finances basically right because uh, we know like in Uzbekistan probably in Pakistan a lot of women stay on in marriage you know they they just hang on to it because they yeah they depend on their husbands financially for for their living for the rest of their lives right Mm -hmm. um but for most educated and independent women who uh, earn their own money it's it's a bit difficult right they think like okay what's the point if if he's what what do you bring to the table you know yeah. And this is this is wrong, you know. This is feminist approach, and this this is completely wrong. It, yeah, Aswa, go ahead. So you know uh, the other there are two reasons usually women stick, as you're saying that one of the reasons is finance, but the other reasons are children too. So you know sometimes I pray to other people and say, may you find reason to be together, which is more and bigger than just the children, because usually just 90% of the time it boils down to we're, st- we're together because of the children. Mm-hmm. So you know this is also one of the one of the reasons you stick to the marriage. But th- then again, we need to find more reasons because I, unless we have our whys, unless we have our whys clearer and bigger, you know, it's difficult to stay in a relationship and be content with it. But like you said, you know, like uh, Islamically, if he is providing for his family, yeah, he's uh, providing like housing, okay? 
he's paying bills, you know, he's bringing grocery, then like, you know, he is fulfilling his duties Islamically, right? Islamically. Exactly, exactly. And, um, I think we sometimes we expect more than that. Our expect expectations are a lot more, for example, we want them to like, uh, I can guess from the, you know, the email that uh, we want them to sit down and do maths with our children. We want them to sit down and, you know, play or, you know, do, do Quran. And I remember, you know, when my children were younger, I used to ask, like, can you just do like, you know, my husband was very fluent. You know, he had his degree in Arabic Islamic studies. Like, do you have an hour Quran? And my daughter, my eldest was only two at the time. Right. And then it'd be like, she's too young. What can I do? Like, basically, he didn't know how to right? Or I'd be like, oh, can you just do too much like you know like I was like very enthusiastic uh, homeschooling yeah. mama trying to get my husband on board but looking back I realized that uh, you know like I caused so much grief to myself you know for like for expecting him to join yes, in right all because of my preconceived expectations which were not matching my reality subhanallah and yeah. it's it's not it's not uh, it's not obligatory, you know, it's not mandatory Islamically, it's not his, how to say, it's not fault on him, and this is not a good enough reason for uh, someone to consider, oh, okay, maybe like, what is in this marriage for me then maybe, you know, uh, maybe I should get divorced, you know, this is this is very, very feminist approach, and this is like uh, too much maybe like, I don't know, maybe Netflix or maybe looking at these catalogs where you see, you know, wife and husband and with the child, they're going on a bicycle ride. And I, I have two, two things to say. One is exactly um, um, basically soundboarding what you just said. I, I had asked this question and I've, I've asked this question regularly when I'm talking to people. When we talk about Islam and talk about the Sahaba and the Seerah and all of this, where did you see where the men were at home all the time? They were, if they were businessmen, if they were farmers, if they were, they were, if they were in the on the war, in the war, they were always traveling. Who was raising the children? Who raised the tabi'in and tabi tabi'in? Like women raised that generation. I agree. And here I will connect to what Espa said before: tribe of women, tribe of grandparents, probably the older generation, the the mothers, basically the co-wives, all of this. Where were the men there? <laughs> men were like just examples. Men were basically stories. Men were men were available when children grew older, right? For girls, because marriages were happening younger. So their husbands, because they were older men, or even if they were same age, their husbands, right? And for for um, men, it was always their fathers, because if the father is around or the stepfather is around or the uncle is around. So this you you're right this this whole concept this idea that men are supposed to do all those xyz things apart from the obligations that are doing the romanticizing of a man's role right is is the problem basically i've i know from my own experience when i say lonely i could not point what was wrong in my marriage and i and when my when i used to have these frustrated conversations my mom used to say what is wrong just then tell me what is wrong. And I would cry and I did not know what was wrong. Today I know what is wrong. I wanted him to give me time. Yes, exactly. exactly. True. I wanted him to look at me and look at my face and say, I love you and I miss you. Okay, let's let's watch something together. Or, you know, oh, you know, I'll just take you out for something. Or or I don't know. The silly, Our silly love smallest tank, things. Yeah. I wanted Our to love tank wasn't. Yep, yeah, sorry, I sorry for interrupting. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. You're, you're right. Absolutely. So our love tank wasn't but, uh, getting filled. Exactly. But but the thing is, the love tank had wrong expectations. Exactly. <laughs> too, too many that. expectations. Yeah. So too I think it boils down to two were, things. I, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Just yeah. So it, I think it boils down to two And then I have a funny story. Things. I'll share the funny story after this. Yeah. Perfect. So I think it boils down to two things. Understand what is your expectations. Maybe write them down, you know, list them down. Whatever your expectations are in terms of relationship 
okay, just to narrow it down in terms of relationship with your spouse. It could be that he's not giving time. It could be that he's not giving attention. It could be that he's not appreciating your work. And it could be that he's not appreciating all the hard work that you're doing, raising your children. It could be not listening to your day's long story could be anything and you know then again obviously it could be money that he's bringing in you know whatever sustenance once you have once you have listed down all the expectation maybe you can what you can do is delegate those expectation to the support groups that you have so some of them goes to your husband some of them maybe goes to the tribe that you have some of them may, may go back to your parents or yourself so so that you do not overload and overburden one relationship hopefully this this works yeah inshallah i mean if I, so so two stories so one the you, you're telling the story, story. Really laugh at this story i had a friend who said that my and they're a young couple the boy and the girl they're a young couple like early marriage years right so uh, she said i spoke with my brother for an hour on the phone he was so upset i said what was he, why was he upset and she said well it was valentine's day now so okay <laughs> valentine's day mashallah and uh, he said the the roses were o- over there were no roses in the market and so i just went and i couldn't get red roses and so i got white roses which were still more expensive and my wife is still upset with me i didn't get red roses <laughs> yeah seriously yeah <laughs> and we are muslim umma these these are muslim people right so the, the are yeah, my, my are husband muslim. calls them like first world problems yeah you they know? are they are but this is in pakistan so it is technically third world but privileged problem <laughs> definitely definitely <laughs> wow subhanallah uh, yeah and and um the second funny story which now i realize subhanallah So my daughter, this is a few months ago. She's 10, right? She comes to me and she says, "Mama, I have to complain about Bhai," meaning his her brother, older one, right? So uh the the brother is the eldest and then there are two younger sisters. So I I want to complain about Bhai. I was like, "Okay, what, what do you have to complain about?" I thought maybe he was being mean to her or bossing her around. She says, "Bhai, mama, is so careless. I can't tell you how careless he is." I said, "What did he do?" "Mama, he He forgets to fold his laundry. He forgets his socks everywhere. He put, he puts his towel here and there. When you tell him to clean his plate, he does not clean his plate. I have to put his dishes back in, the, and it felt as if a wife was complaining about it. <laughs> Mama, Turns out, <laughs> then Mama, when he's thirsty, he does not get up to get water. He says, "Bring me water." And I'm like thinking in my head, and quickly in my head, I'm calculating: Does their father do that? Does their father do that? No, he does not do that. So who did my son see doing it? No, he did not see anybody doing it. So by fitra, he is and 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 if if you talk about him being intelligent, mashallah, he's always reading, always learning, always into anything that you know um, helps him uh, fill that cup of knowledge. But when it comes to doing these things, he's just careless. And I we keep repeating, I keep reiterating. But that was such a funny incident, and it it clicked to me that um, fitra is another thing. like uh do we know what the fitra of the the men is what the fitra of the women is why don't we teach our children how to you know um learn and understand and have uh, this uh, compassion for each other because some things they just can't do they're not made to to realize it like they're that. not wired like that right and it is also interesting that maybe careless brothers end up becoming careless husband i hope this is not the case with your son i mean <laughs> like and and plus he says mama my wife is going to be perfect because she's never going to complain i said mashallah may allah so mashallah okay alhamdulillah this is true brother please go ahead um, these were just few funny stories that came to my yeah. mind yeah no that's fine mashallah i really enjoyed them mashallah i was laughing my microphone was muted you probably didn't hear but i was <laughs> laughing right so subhanallah i just want to bring like the final thoughts on this topic yes we feel alone especially when our children are ever so young you know because they depend on you literally for everything right you are doing everything you are breastfeeding you are waking up in the middle of the night preparing bottle or feeding changing nappies bathing putting them to sleep literally feeding them and you need help and support if you can get like uh, you know part time cleaner or helper once a week who can come cook clean for you do that subhanallah if you can afford it do that if not then tell your husband because all human beings you know i was reading recently that we have 
emotional, spiritual, and physical needs like synchronized, right? And synchronized. And guess what tops off? Guess what cuts off the other two? Guess what needs have priority over the other two? It's your emotional needs. Emotional needs can just freeze, right? Can lock and unlock your brain, basically. It has a key to your mind. It can just, you know, it has a key to your reasoning. It has a key to your logical, you know, workings of your mind. When you are not emotionally fulfilled, when you are feeling all lonely, you can't then like you can't think logically like you know you 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 have you are more prone to uh shaitan's waswas for example right shaitan will be bringing all thoughts of like whispering all thoughts of thoughts into your head so get that support like asba said from elsewhere try to look out for people who can lift you up really subhanallah we need that and in today's day and age if you, if you can get that support from a virtual place then go ahead and do that right subhanallah we're all living in different parts of the world right subhanallah like look uh, asba is from the uh, from pakistan and living in the caribbean and i'm always wondering you know what's pakistani doing in in the cayman islands what do you do there you know and yeah. Ir Irim is in America and I'm like from Uzbekistan, but then from the UK and then in the Saudi Arabia, we have no family here, right? So the, the world has become a global village and now anybody, everybody is like self-isolating anyway for the past year. So it's probably even more so people are feeling isolated and lonely due to lockdown measures and, you know, COVID-19, et cetera, right? So seek out help, communicate your needs to your husband, right? But not in a like nagging, threatening way. Like, you know, if you don't do this, I will divorce, you know, or I will ask for divorce. Uh, or like sometimes we're very good at nagging, right? Like pestering, um, just communicate it, right? Just say like, oh, I, re I really feel lonely. Like um, I want you to. I need some time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I like I always say, men don't need problems, right? Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. Their head works straight. They don't want to hear you never spend time with your children. You never spend time with me. You never at home. And when you're at home, you're always on your laptop. They don't want to hear that. They give them solutions. Like right? every mm -hmm. Friday, it's weekend. I want you to take kids out to the park for one hour. Yeah. If possible, yeah. give them a time. Like you know, from four to five go take them out right or every saturday yeah, take them uh, yeah give, give like half an hour sit and read a book with your children right give mm -hmm. them solution give them dates give them times you know like say like oh i need this i need to go out and visit my friend i need to see that somebody or i want to invite somebody to my house right so like these are simple solutions give them solutions express your needs in this way and try to build like your tribe like asba said that helps with loneliness and um, I just want to mention this beautiful story I was reading from the life of uh, Omar radiallahu anhu, just an incident, right? So he, he was sat with, a, when, when he became a Khalifa, he was sat with a group of men one day and he asked them to make a wish. And then one of the companions said, oh, I wish this room was full of gold and I spent it in, uh, you know, jihad. And he kept quiet and he said, make a wish. And then another companion said, I wish this room was full of pearls and jewels. And, you know, I, I would spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, like giving away for charity. And he repeated for the third time, make a wish. And uh, all the companions were like, okay, what do we wish for? Ya Amir al -Mu'mineen. And he said, I wish this room was full of men, like, you know, Ma'ad ibn Jabal, like Salim, like Abu Talha, you know, the men who could... Um, spread the word of Allah like the importance what I get from this is like importance of having the right friends right mm -hmm. good tribe yes. lift you up yeah and they they are like a treasure value them you know hold on tight to them friends who remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala friends who remind you of akhira uh, you know hold on tight to them because these are the kind of friends that give you the sound solid advice that you are seeking Mm -hmm. the, the, the right and even sometimes just listening you know even sometimes just listening to 
And when, one thing I would like to add to this is to Rodha said, when we, when we are talking about lowering expectation, I think we should also lower our expectation from ourselves because as you're saying, sometimes you're able to afford house help that's awesome. But other times, if you are unable to do that, just have lower expectation of yourself. The house doesn't need to be clean all the time because, you know, often we are struggling in that way too. We are trying to over deliver we, we, because we over expect from ourselves and we over expect from other people too. So when we're talking about, you know, lowering the expectation from other people, I think we should also lower expectation from ourselves. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Aram, final thoughts from you? Mashallah, I mean, it's so beautiful. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with everything said. Alhamdulillah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I think one, one thing, so we finally came to the two, two conclusions. Number one is that have your expectations written down and see if you can delegate them with other people. So if you want somebody to listen to your stories and your husband is not that kind, maybe you need somebody else to go to to be able to uh, share your stories with and clear communication with your husband so if you are thinking you're too lonely because you know it comes it looks like from this message that she's craving that time and attention just like sister Iram said you know so in this this message tells that I need your time I need your love I need your attention so in order to cater to that if he's too busy everybody has time it's just about priorities right so maybe they can sit down and block the time off calendar that this i need 10 minutes 15 minutes of quality time with you and even just sister um, Iroda said even schedule what you're going to be doing in those times maybe whatever works for you if you're a games person maybe you can sit down and play a game together or just talk or just you know have that time blocked off in calendar so that you know there's a probability of it happening, you know, inshallah. Hopefully I would, I would this, just like, this I would like to add this one thing that <clears throat> the, the only danger in, in, in sharing our, uh, our emotions with other people outside of, because a, they cannot, they cannot replace it similarly. Like right? they're, they're just, they're just going to mimic what we are saying and then they're going to add something else in it. So as soon as you realize that the person you thought or the, the tribe that you thought is going is serving the purpose, as soon as you realize it's not serving the purpose, change it because it's just going to add on to, to more problem because I've seen this in my own experience. Yeah. And, and, and now, and now, because again, like Sister Roda and I, we say that we are, we are past that part of, uh, we're past that part of, you know, uh, emotional instability, at least for myself, it was emotional instability. And I groomed myself by learning, continually learning and by changing uh, the people that I was surrounding myself with. And at, at some point I became so tired and disappointed with every time I picked up a group of people there was something that would, you know, uh, hurt me. And then I started just making the Allah, okay, I do not know, just you send me the people that I need to be around. And subhanAllah, the age of internet, like all three of us are sitting, mashallah, our, our works, um, uh, our, our work talks almost about similar things. And we, we, we <laughs> alhamdulillah, yes, hard. And, and, and do you know, this is, this also means hard. I did not, I've just, created yeah, this. yeah. Philippines in Philippines, I believe the people <laughs> calls it. Every, every so I love it. Subhanallah. So learning is the only answer. Learning about yourself, learning about your love language, learning about your children, learning about your spouse. Like all three of us, when we talk on the topic of children, we say the children need one-on-one -on -one attention. How are we different? Just because our bodies have grown, our ages have grown, the emotional needs are yeah. almost similar, still the right? same. So we groom yourself, keep grooming yourself. Alhamdulillah. That's I think that's the most important thing. Do not get stuck with this idea that somebody else is going to come and then my problem is going to resolve because that's not how it is ever going to work inshallah yes one more one last thing before we inshallah go is like you know it's your sister is talking about learning and i remember i was sharing this with sister Iroda that one of my favorite the ask that i keep on persistently asking perhaps in most of the salahs as well, is this dua, Rabbi habli hukman wa al-hiqni bis salihin. And ultimately, this is also the dua of finding good friends. So in, in this dua, we are basically asking Allah Ta'ala, grant us wisdom and grant us righteous company. So, you know, the company that, that exactly you need, that reminds you of Allah and wisdom. And it is also so interesting that wisdom and learning and knowledge is directly connected to good company. So when you are asking for wisdom, you are ultimately getting good company. And when you're asking for good company, you're ultimately getting wisdom. So this is uh, one of my go-to du'as for asking friends and being able to be connected to 
amazing people like you know you two and all so many amazing women alhamdulillah i think this is the answer of this dua so if this is the you inshallah you can start asking that dua as well alhamdulillah mashallah mashallah absolutely beautiful i really loved your input so thoughtful and so insight insightful jazakumullah khair and all the lovely ladies who are tuning in to today's episode uh mashallah please share your takeaways and thoughts in the comments iram my, myself and uh, sister asba are um very active on social media so if you don't follow us already please follow us on uh, instagram and facebook and to ask your questions if you have any specific questions that you would like us to discuss uh, you know as part of this podcast please get in touch by uh, info at raising.scholars uh, dash scholars.com you can also sponsor monday musings parenting podcast for muslim families which you can find the sponsorship link in the description box directly below this um video if you're watching this on youtube inshallah you can also find the sponsorship link on our website ladies jazakumullah khair for your time and effort i had absolutely lovely time with both of you mashallah and i look forward to connecting with you virtually again at some point inshallah and iram inshallah, inshallah. i'll hopefully see you at the next episode assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh